Let's unravel Geeta's world. Hello and welcome. This is the 103rd episode of Geeta's world and uh, lest I complain, Geeta has already thrown me a party. Yes. 100 episodes and I'm yes, sure thrown the team a party. It was lovely. Party. Yeah. Please log on to our uh, podcast uh, Insta it. account to see how I appreciated Anna's <laughs> work. <laughs> and uh, how nicely she makes us all work and uh, put out, ensures that we put out a very good well researched podcast so this, please yeah. go to our uh, podcast handle and watch that little snippet of our celebrations yes i mean geeta is always like you know <laughs> all Like she praises me so much. I'm like so humbled. <laughs> I can't say anything. I'm like speechless. <laughs> People are thinking: Are they being real or sarcastic? <laughs> That know. is also one thing. <laughs> yeah, but no. a lot of hard work. <clears throat> And from Geeta's end as well. I mean, <laughs> I should the appreciate research. her too. <laughs> no, the, the research, research and then the I questions. yeah, like I compel her to you know sit throughout. and just because the 40, it's it's 50 minutes yeah it's so insightful yeah. to listen to you mm. geeta no genuinely <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no genuinely it's very insightful and like on a very serious note if you want to believe me that all my knowledge regarding this world has been because of oh you. my god yeah, now so, i'm humbled yeah yeah thank you <laughs> so today also i am going to pick your brain regarding Bangladesh Also, watching Daily Global. Oh, guys! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Please. more coverage on Please, international I, affairs. I, I mean, fabulous reporting, fabulous uh, shows have come up on India Today Global. So please do watch out. And uh, they have a you have a YouTube. It's a YouTube, YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Yes. We uh, launched recently. We are going to go very big on U.S. elections. Right. Apart from the fact that we'll be. We'll be discussing a lot of it here as well, mm -hmm. closer to U.S. elections. But if you want a daily coverage, please yeah. log on. So, like I was saying, this time also we are discussing Bangladesh because uh, two episodes we have done on Bangladesh, and it was the hot topic back then. But it is still a hot topic, also because it's neighborhood, Anna. Yeah, and, very important, and it impacts us directly. Right, and now, I mean, not at that point, but now certainly India has become, you know, the focus. the center of focus because uh, what is happening and the kind of news that is coming in from the bnp the bangladeshi you know the bangladesh nationalist party over there uh, with the awami league sort of being sidelined right now uh, because sheikh hasina is here uh, taking refuge in india so there are a lot of statements coming in from the bnp officials so we are going to explore that Um, um right now i mean uh, an interim government has taken charge mohammed yunus is there uh, at the helm trying to stabilize the situation but you know i mean we have discussed also and right now also the situation doesn't seem normal i mean far from normal uh, in bangladesh but elections are on the horizon geeta or i mean it's not yet clear when the elections will be taking place but definitely on the cards right on the cards but uh, the interim government will decide and um, uh, there are no rules as to when or a time frame as to when elections have to be held mm -hmm. what they actually what the criteria actually is to have uh, the law and order situation in order to have a system in place uh, so that a uh, free and fair election can be held and once all these uh, various factors are taken care of then elections can be held but for this government right mm -hmm. now because uh, the country went into chaos it is also about stabilizing the economy economy right because That's what will you do if you've not stabilized uh, the economy so st they are looking at stabilizing the economy the situation a little and then going into elections although i do think that uh, the bnp would not want to wait a long time because this is they're high right now they're on a high and uh, that could translate into a massive electoral win rather than a split yeah uh, electoral verdict yeah. and um, is the reason why you're seeing now the bnp seeking and asking for a uh, 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 fast paced 
mm. transition rather than one where the interim government is saying they want to take some more time. Right. Uh, and one of the major demands. It might not is... happen by this year end itself. Mm-hmm. It could if there's too much pressure. But I'm thinking early next year. Right. Because I don't think uh, uh, Professor Yunus will be able to sustain an interim government for longer than that. Okay. Okay. There'll be too much pressure. Hmm. The yeah. pulls and pushes within the ga- country is yeah. way too much right now. Right. And uh, I mean, regarding the BNP, because, you know, the anti-India sentiment uh, in Bangladesh, I mean, right from, you know, uh, boycotting Indian goods, it started and then how it has catapulted to something. Oh, we like, discussed the India Out campaign. They actually had an India Out campaign. Yeah. Um, they were doing away with Indian saris, Indian yeah. artifacts, everything Indian. In fact, they actually accused Sheikh Hasina of wearing Indian saris. Which is Which is not true not because true. she is famous. Yeah. She is known for her Dhakai saris. Yeah, right. Uh, so this time, uh, I mean, I'm seeing that, uh, you know, the the... Uh, the main focus here is of the BNP making this demand to extradite Sheikh Hasina. We discussed it last last time, and I said it is going to happen sooner yeah, or later. Sooner or later. So uh, let's let's explore that. How is because like like I said, you know, India is at the focus. So how is India going to react? How is India going to see this? And what will India's steps be? Uh, Because there is pressure. Just this Monday only, um, by recording on the Tuesday, just this Monday, yesterday, uh, BNP's General Secretary, Mirza Fakrul Islam Alamgir, uh, he told the Indian media uh, to PTI that uh, Sheikh Hasina must be extradited and face trial in Bangladesh. And on the same day, Mohammed Qadir, who is the chairman of the Jatiya Party and former opposition leader, he echoed this call. And uh, I'm I'm quoting uh, what Alamgir said. He said that Sheikh Hasina has to face the law of Bangladesh for all the crimes and corruption committed by her and her regime. To enable this and respect the sentiments of the people of Bangladesh, India should uh, ensure her return to Bangladesh. And Hasina and the Awami League are both condemned here and standing by them will only worsen the perception of India in Bangladesh. So right off the bat, Gita, what... Do you think how India will going to, you know, will be reacting to this? So this is a ticking time bomb, I'd say. And I don't say this because we should not engage Awami League. They have been very good to us. Sheikh Hasina as a neighborhood leader has been very, very good to India. In fact, the fear is that Bangladesh will no longer be the country, uh, the trusted partner that India saw in her. Uh, with the BNP, with the Jamaat, with any other ca- party that comes to power, the geopolitical dynamics is going to shift mm-hmm. and drastically so. But over here, um, the demand back home of the people is because of what her own tenure in the past two terms has been. That aside, for why do I say it's a ticking bomb is because the longer... So there are two things. One is that India wants to have good relations with Bangladesh. Bangladesh, on the one hand, has warned and threatened, but also has said, because this is the reality, this is the real picture. They also understand the importance of India. BNP understood that, you know, you cannot sustain a government or the country without India's support. So Mm. you either choose to support terrorists and allow them space or you choose to engage India. Professor Yunus has made it very clear that this, that's the interim government, BNP aside, um, that that they want very good ties with India. So when they are saying this, India is going to look at, you know, um, reaching out as well because Bangladesh is important. Right. But in doing so and knowing that if there are elections that are held, in all probability, BNP will be coming to power. And if the general secretary is saying that keeping Sheikh Hasina in India could cost the two countries mm-hmm. uh, its its good diplomatic ties, now that is something that India will have to actually think over. But it's a ticking bomb because mm-hmm. when she left, it was on a very short notice. Mm-hmm. As a friend, India had no other choice and shouldn't have. Yeah. India should have hosted her, which is what India did. And right now, they're in the middle of conversations, I suppose, with countries where she could go. 
like I said last time, Anna, um, it no longer is in the realm of Sheikh Hasina and her camp figuring a country out that India will have to play a role in this and get a friendly uh, partner to host her. Okay. One that will not face the brunt or the impact of a hostile Bangladesh. Mm. Um, European countries could, but if it's a country like UAE, strong ties uh, and Bangladesh will not take a very hostile view to Sheikh Hasina being hosted in Dubai. But again, these are all, you know, things we are hearing. It's all mm. up in the air. We'll have to wait and see where she goes next. But she will have to go mm. for India to be able to freely engage Bangladesh. Yeah. Otherwise, this will always be a sword, you know, hanging the yeah. But extradition from India to Bangladesh, that you think is like, I mean, um, won't happen. So this is this is not the interim government's demand. This yeah, is BNP's, BNP's demand. demand. Yeah. So it's a political demand for now. There is no request from the interim government, oh. so so to say. Um, the request has to come from the interim government. Political parties can make demands. Okay. Professor Yunus, I don't think, will be doing that right now. These are not the feathers he wants to ruffle. If, if even he, if he's looking westward, uh, America would not want that. America didn't was not of much help in looking into India's considerations uh, when all this happened. But they will surely consider this. So Yunus wouldn't want India to ruffle to be, feathers with uh, DC, and therefore would not want to uh, okay. rake up this issue right now. Okay, but should the cases mount, there will be a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, he could either say that you know let the elections be held, a proper government be in place, and then you can engage India on in extradition. That can also be said. But for now, uh, the demand is from a political party. Got it. A party that was in the opposition and could be in power. Mm. So I was curious, Geeta, because I was thinking that can Bangladesh with the BNP in power, hypothetically, afford to have a very like a strained relationship with India? Because S.J. Shankar, uh, I was listening to him the other day. He said recently that when the boycott Maldives had happened um, and, you know, there was a pro-China with Moitsu coming to power, uh, there was a pro-China, you know, government elected. So everybody was like, oh, now the relations with Maldives have, you know, have gone very sour. And uh, now, you know, you can't salvage it. But you see, I mean, I mean now, just now recently, uh, Mohammed Moizu led the Maldives joint hands with Mauritius, Sri Lanka and India for a regional maritime security architecture at the national security advisor level on that's the colombo dialogue 30th september that's yes. the colombo dialogue that's they the are Columbo always dialogue. there for the colombo dialogue yeah and uh maldives came there as part of the annual thing that they do yeah but, a, a but, Bangladesh observe but you're right in observing that yeah. yes they have not gone as india out as they came to power on the basis of which right that exactly. has not happened exactly so i really think anna over here there are two things. One is that no country in the region can really afford to have um, an absolute uh, relationship of animosity with India anymore. Barring Pakistan, maybe, because we're still not uh, talking to Pakistan formally, officially. Um, but there are two ways of looking at every relationship. The neighborhood has become very difficult. So Foreign it's no longer a friendly neighborhood. Mm. It's a difficult neighborhood. India will have to live with it. India has to realize it. Bangladesh, I think, was one of the last of the friendly partners we had. Mm. And now we've lost Bangladesh itself also. Uh, with a BNP in power, the relationship will be very difficult. So it might not be uh, one of animosity that the two uh, countries would share, but it will certainly be difficult. Mm. And the beginnings of which can be seen with the Adani electricity right. now being rejected, saying that it's too costly, yeah. the reason and exploitative, all. so on and so forth. Yeah. That's just the beginning. There mm. are going to be a series of things that you will see where India will have to fight for every inch of space it gets in Bangladesh. 
that's how difficult it's going to get. Make don't have any doubt right. about how difficult things are going to get for India and Bangladesh. Is it going to be the way it was when Khalid Azia was in power the last time around? I don't think so. Because this time around, they've all come to power with certain amount of support and blessing of the West also. Yeah. Where uh, they weren't clearly out and out supporting the BNP, but they were certainly standing against Sheikh Hasina, knowing very well that if Sheikh Hasina goes, mm -hmm. then it will obviously be BNP and Jamaat. Yeah. And you're seeing them back. Jamaat, the ban has been lifted. Um, mm. We are seeing a political move towards... Uh, creating a space that will allow a BNP to form government, right? And if that happens, they will have to look to what um, the West is, uh, how the West is monitoring the the country. And one area where maybe we will not feel as compromised as in the last Khalida regime is security-wise. Mm. That this time around, they will not be able to give safe havens to insurgent no. uh, insurgency groups as they did last time. Yeah. That there won't be uh, camps allowed like, or I'm assuming that that should be the case. I'm yeah. assuming that that should be the case, Anna, because if they do, it is going to be very bad. Then we're having, no, it's, it's going to be go beyond difficult. Mm -hmm. But on trade investment, they also want trade investment. Yeah. Their economy is in a shambles now. For a country that was doing well and growing well, they actually are having a very difficult time right now. And it's all going to go to a notch and they'll have to start. Mm. Uh, so it's a very difficult phase and period. And in that, they'll require India for that connectivity, trade, investment, the boost, the money, a lot of which, which they will look at Beijing also for. Yeah. But they will have to balance the act because nobody wants to become a satellite state. Right. And we say that, you know, looking at the example of Sri Lanka, but look at what is happening in the Maldives. Mm -hmm. They are engaging India yet again because they also see that they need China. A lot of investments, a lot of the investments now have gone to China. Yeah. But they still are uh, trying to engage in India. But it's also the other way around where India is trying to really engage the Maldives because you don't want to lose this country completely. You've lost it quite a bit. Don't want to lose it completely. There's a telling picture, mm, it's, it's, Anna, yeah. when D Dr. Jay Shankar landed recently in the Maldives. Do you know who received him? Mm. The man who received him was the man who was the front of the India Out campaign. Wow. Received. <laughs> yeah. The so, minister. Yeah, that's what precisely what S. J. Shankar was saying. That this is how diplomacy works. Like, like you have to, you have to shake hands with people you right. know might not like you too. Exactly, and so, but you have to get your work done. You have to keep your interests in mind, which is why India is engaging the Maldives. Yeah. Although, mm, if you look at the neighborhood today, whether it's Nepal. It's Sh Sri Lanka is Sri Lanka, also to to a certain extent now with the change in yeah. government and everything has become pro India again. Mm. But the elections but are due. They so. they do factor in what mm -hmm. China is thinking and how China is thinking. Yeah. yeah. The Maldives, um, Myanmar, of course, Bangladesh, Nepal. Um, Nepal, we've already said. Yeah. Um, all the countries around. Mm. India right now mm. and our immediate neighbor China included. Clearly. We have a very difficult relationship. With. Yeah. So all in all, what you're saying is it's going to be very difficult if the BNP comes in power in Bangladesh uh, for India to engage with and work with. But it doesn't mean that the ties will be cut off uh, for both India and BNP to actually afford that. Is going no, to I be, don't think so. Yeah, yeah that I is, don't think so. Because, you know, ultimately, the past and the history will sort of keep both the countries together. Absolutely. Right? But believe me, if, mm. they, if the elections are held sooner, mm. the only thing that uh, BNP will focus on is Sheikh Hasina and her extradition. That's what. Because for them, there have been political murders that were committed. Yeah. For them, there are charges of killings and murder yeah. And persecution now against her. So if they want to go to their people and say justice has been served, this is accountability, then the person responsible for that will have to be held accountable. Mm. 
and so they will have to then you know seek extradition so they're already creating that atmosphere where they're saying yeah that so if it's if it's here if she's here then in india but if she moves anywhere there will be an extradition request that will go to that country mm. basically the question should be turned around yeah and it's not just about india and what india will face because india will have to move her out this is now established that we are sitting on a ticking bomb yeah time bomb over here uh and uh, she will have to be moved out uh with all due respect to all that she's done we're mm. not saying that it's just the politics of her country that has mm. changed and that makes life very difficult having said that the question should be turned around on how difficult it's going to get for sheikh hasina and her family right now yeah. where no matter where she goes she will yeah. be hunted down by the bangladeshi government yeah what is very interesting over here anna is and we did that story some time ago when we got the foreign minister the then foreign minister during the sheikh hasina regime not so long ago yeah that sheikh mujibur rahman's killers yeah are sitting in canada and the us on asylum oh. asylum denied to uh, or whatever yeah. not considered of sheikh hasina or she didn't ask for it or whatever mm. but look at the play out here in the north americas where canada and uh, uh, america are okay housing sheikh, sheikh mujibur rahman rahman's killers. killers but not okay with Sheikh Hasina coming to take. I I'm okay with that. Her them questioning her and her human rights record. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's, I mean that's US that's, is always that's, there. Yeah, yes, that's your the individual pioneer. decision on mm-hmm. how the country is looking at the records at mm-hmm. this point in time. Right. I mean, but, at least US made it clear. But then mm-hmm. Sheikh Hasina's government tried for years to get them extradited. Extradition is not an easy easy thing. Hmm. It's, establishing it's, crime it's a legal process right yeah. i mean that's how it also done. because the moment you say that um the penalty would be death yeah then it becomes a no go yeah for quite a few of these countries uh-huh. so the conversation will be is it going to be less than death or not okay it cannot be death ah, i mean a lot of countries the... don't have death sentences although us does yeah. but i'm just saying yeah. that that becomes a no go because then they claim persecution mm. that this is political vendetta and persecution mm. we were not involved mm. right um just quickly geeta i just want to focus on one of the the other things that the bnp's uh, you know general secretary said he said that uh, with an india out campaign in bangladesh there is palpable anger against india and india's diplomacy regarding bangladesh was not pragmatic um I know it's politically motivated, but regardless, I just want to ask. What was the ask, premise? What's the premise of the statement? So he's saying that India did not establish a relationship with the people of Bangladesh and other stakeholders. I, I beg to differ. And I beg to differ. So you you don't think that India really faulted here because he's saying that India actually put all the eggs in one basket. That's the government implying the Awami League, and you never engage. Try to engage, but they engage the people also. they engage the people there's a lot of people to people exchange what they did not do now mm. this is where i fault the government is read the room yeah. that people were unhappy with her for her high handedness that there was curtailment of freedom but you were looking the other way because you're thinking that if sheikh hasina goes then bnp will come and it'll be a massive disaster for india so that's not how you look at it firstly secondly um when the opposition is boycotting elections and you're not telling your friend yeah your friend right your friend that if you do this if you go ahead without an interim government which is the rule or which is how you've conducted elections mm-hmm. if you don't have an interim government and you conduct elections yourself and there's a boycott yeah. then that's also curtailment of rights mm. people are not happy with you that reading of the room and telling your friend that 
stop this now. You're not doing because you think it'll cost you your friendship with the Awami League and with Sheikh Hasina. And at this point in time, you couldn't afford to do that is not good enough. That's where they were not one with the people. Yeah. Not like people to people exchange was not happening or India was not thinking for the people of Bangladesh because there's so many development projects India was doing with the people of Afghanistan. So many projects, not just development, otherwise also incentives, vocational training, vocations. Uh, a lot was happening between India and Bangladesh at so many levels. But mm. to not honestly give that assessment to your friend and partner that you are right now wrong and you're losing yeah. not just credibility, public uh, support is the problem here. Mm. So they can say, well, this was inevitable that, you know, we have some from India who say, but, you know, and a lot of it is blamed on legacy, so on and so on. I'm sorry. Take onus. Yeah. It's all right. Sometimes, yes, mm -hmm. you make a you make a judgment thinking, knowing what you think is right for your country at that point in time. Little did anybody think that it will descend to this chaos. Oh, Everybody course, thought that, okay, there will be another election or she'll be able mm -hmm. to manage or control. Mm -hmm. Nobody thought that it will descend to this madness and anarchy, right? Right. But then that's that's the beauty of diplomacy, right? I mean, that's Democracy or diplomacy? Uh, diplomacy mm -hmm. and democracy, both. Yeah. I'm speaking from the Indian perspective that when he's saying that you put all eggs in one basket... Of course, I agree with you, but then you also anticipate that there are other players, no, no, right? That's, if, if that was the argument, yes. Mm -hmm. They did put all eggs in the Awami League basket, which means that they actually, even in terms of engaging people, they were engaging those who were pro Awami League. Yeah, It's not like those who were sitting in the opposition or people supporting the BNP were being benefited at all. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know whether the benefits, apart from the development projects, which is for everybody, mm -hmm. um, other engagements, and I don't know how much... Um, of engagement happened on that front, mm. which is why we are a little, a little lost mm. yeah. there, you know, in terms of trying to find our way back into the... And not only this, Geeta, there are other issues as well. Like, for example, the visa thing. I mean, uh, the, the at a time when Bangladesh is thinking that, okay, you need a country to be supportive. Indian visa centers in Bangladesh, they have limited their services of course, there are reasons to that. But There's a lot of security aspects. Security right? aspects, yes. But that has become an issue, uh, you know, contributing to the anti-India sentiment. Uh, then the other issue is the flood issue. Although MEA, I mean, the Ministry of External Affairs have refuted, I mean, uh, said that the CNN report, um, you know, because there were so many online, you know, rumors no, but, you online. Know, what does Bangladesh. the CNN report do? So this, oh, she's in the Fanny River on a boat mm -hmm. and she's saying exactly what the claims are. Mm. She has not gone and seen whether India has opened the gates and the waters uh, come in and she's just somewhere, she's not corroborated. She has not gone to the site. There's nothing in that report. So everybody says, oh my God, this is the Western. She's just saying that the BNP is saying this, although the Indian government is refuting it. Any which way, uh, even if you see a BNP tilt to it, yeah. uh, the fact of the matter is that she has not managed to corroborate anything. She might just be speaking what BNP government wants her to say, and she must have done that. Yeah. But there's no corroboration of that, of the fact that India actually let out water to destroy Thank homes. Thank you for saying that. That's that's silly, right? Yeah. That's bad. That's lazy journalism lazy or bad yeah. uh, reporting. Mm -hmm. Uh, not on her part, on the interpretation, interpretation also of yes. her reporting. She must just be doing Many what she's doing. Many YouTubers are like going crazy. Oh yeah, my God, but that's not, this, that's you know, not the case. I'm sorry. Yeah. She has very clearly, if you re see that report, very clearly said mm -hmm. that the BNP or the interim government or whoever is claiming that India has done that. India has rejected those reports. Yeah. And if you see the flood-like situation... Uh, both sides of the border have been suffering of course. flood like situation because of the mm. rains and the monsoon. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, nothing over here is deliberate and nobody wants it at this point in time. Yeah. Why would India want to further spoil relations? I mean, why? And like why it, would India want to do that to the people of Bangladesh? Bangladesh exactly. But that's what, like, we there are has trying to. There must be some logic. 
that's that's the word Geeta that's the word there has to word. be some logic in uh, what Bangladesh is saying mm. what the YouTubers are saying what is happening on social media some logic yeah that needs to be heard quite also like coming to just focusing a bit on uh, Muhammad Yunus um, he's just completed like 24 to 25 days uh, as the chief advisor to the Bangladeshi, you know, interim government. And even though it's a very short time, Gita, it does seem that there is laxity in ensuring the safety of Bangladesh's religious minorities. Uh, although we have mentioned this, but in Hindus continue to be assaulted. There are reports uh, that uh, Hindu teachers have been made to resign from their jobs forcefully. And at the same time, like you said, the UNIS government is busy freeing Jamaat leaders. 2,200 BNP Jamaat men have been freed from jail. And, uh, you know, they are lifting the ban on the party. And now the BNP is very much politically motivated. They are demanding the extradition of Sheikh Hasina. So what do you think is exactly happening in Dhaka? Uh, and, like, what could be the possible rationale behind lifting the ban on the on the Islamist Jamaat at a time when your religious minorities are, you know, far from feeling safe in their own country. Because I was reading this article in The Economist recently that explained that why the West so often gets it wrong when it supports a particular leader in a nation country. It might still be very early to give a verdict on Yunus's credentials right now as a genuine Democrat, uh, you know, or like a puppet of the autocrats but what do you make of what has happened so far since Yunus has taken the reins I interviewed Clifford Smith who is a keen Bangladesh watcher recently mm -hmm. and he said to me that whatever it is that's happening in Bangladesh with what with the decisions that are being taken one thing is very clear that Professor Yunus is not in control there's someone behind him who is making the decisions? Why is he listening to these student yeah. leaders yeah. or the military leaders? Yeah. So there's somebody who's there at play. And that might be the case because um, Eunice was brought in to head an interim government. When I spoke to Professor Eunice himself, mm -hmm. he said that he has no political ambitions. And right now he's only holding a position as chief advisor to the in, uh, in the interim government. Yeah. Um, I do think that his heart might be in the right place, but whether if that will lead to stability, something we'll have to wait and see because right now his primary focus would be mm. to stabilize the country. By bring in Bring in law and order situation, but that's yeah. the whole point. Uh, he didn't have to release these prisoners right now. Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah. All this could have been a political decision taken after elections. Why yeah. are they being taken now? What is the reason for him to take these decisions right, right now? Right now. I mean, just 20 days, 24 days, you're yeah. in power so, and... So, Clifford Smith, and I was asking him about this only. Mm -hmm. What is the rationale behind the release of these terrorists. He said that I don't think he's in control, that there's a very clear decision on where Bangladesh is headed. And he also said that I don't think U.S. media understands the nuances of Bangladesh politics, mm. nor do the people in D.C., mm. where they don't know what they have done. That how this is going to impact Bangladesh. Wow. So it's it's actually a very, very yeah. good interview. It's, it's a must I think watch. I, yeah, it's better if I add the yeah, link to the Yeah, add the, the link notes. to it because people should watch it to mm -hmm. understand how serious this is getting. Mm -hmm. That those who thought they are bringing about democracy, in mm -hmm. the name of democracy, if terrorists, especially those, which should be India's concern. Yeah. Releasing people who have carried out activities against India mm -hmm. and are proscribed, mm -hmm. are, are labeled terrorists, mm -hmm. that I mean, you're releasing them. Yeah. Like so Sheikh Hasina, for everything else, that she's done in the past two, ten years, hmm. 
she did do well for her country economically mm. that should be acknowledged but she also was going wrong on some counts only if we could have engaged her to say that you know mm-hmm. this is not how you take people along if any- but that recognition realizing mm. recognizing autocracy questioning it also has to be done by responsible nations yeah. who understand and recognize autocracy right mm-hmm. autocratic behavior so looking the other way thinking it's okay to ha- have an autocrat or who their her people consider an autocrat is a problem mm-hmm. right whether it's um in her autocratic ma- behavior if you see minorities were more protected than now yes so yeah. strange are the ways mm. because worked for india mm. to see that you know minorities were not feeling unsafe mm. now they do feel unsafe although if you speak to bnp leaders and if you speak to the interim government they leaders they they are living in denial saying that that's not the case but that certainly is the case i spoke with uh, khalid husain minority affairs minister in bangladesh mm-hmm. he absolutely rejected the idea of minorities being unsafe he said there have been some quote and quote isolated incidents does not mean that minorities are impacted so it is again a very good interview people should watch to understand mm-hmm. how the interim government mm-hmm. is reacting mm-hmm. to the situation in the country right that itself is a now like a uh, you know subject in itself which needs to be properly studied and un- oh my god because why do i see another podcast coming on minority <laughs> persecution <laughs> in bangladesh <laughs> no actually we should we should yeah, we should yeah, look at yeah. that um, on a serious note hmm. yeah uh, so geeta as we conclude now um we have explored how probable you know how india would probably react to uh, bangladesh if bnp comes to power and if you know how this is a ticking bomb uh, for india uh, so let's also just quickly examine and understand how a bangladesh would look like with bnp at the helm i'm not talking in terms of how india's relation would be but like internally how would you see a bangladesh with bnp in the bar you see it all depends on what their focus is going to be yeah first and foremost their focus should be economy they have to bring it back to where it was i recently had somebody come from shantini ketan mm-hmm. uh, this old sari wala you know dada who comes and um, a lot of the sarees a lot of the handloom the dhakai come from bangladesh yeah So when this time he'd come, he comes before Pujo. Mm. So this time when he came, he said that, uh, oh, not much from Dhaka this time around because all the handloom factories, quite a few of them have been burned down. He said, it's a lot of damage. It's a tremendous loss that uh, they're facing. Although he, he comes from Shantini Ketan, so he's getting fantastic stuff. But, But the yeah, Bangladesh, the, the, the people, textile yeah, industry. The people who would send a lot of the stuff to Shantini Ketan and they'd come to Delhi with the sarees and, you know, they're all marked which one is from which, you know, uh, craftsman. Interesting. Or, yeah. So there you will see a massive, uh, you've already seen a massive loss and damage mm. and they'll have to work on that. The other aspect is um, engagement with India. Yeah. and the neighborhood balancing ties between china and india because it is very important to ensure that they have good ties with both and not one that edges the other out because uh, uh, that will lead to mm. very strained ties in a country club between two asian giants mm-hmm. thirdly their relation bnp's relations with pakistan and the isi uh, we've spoken about this earlier also how they've been engaged with um uh with the pakistani isi and how that could create a security concern for india mm. 
So will they look into those security concerns and ensure that whatever their engagements are, are confined to two countries, bilateral engagements and not mm. a spillover to India's security concerns. Then BNP will also have to have good ties with the United States of America because U.S. is watching. They actually thanked the U.S. ambassador, some of the Jamaati yeah. people and uh, people in the streets thanked the U.S. ambassador for the ambassador's intervention. So that's very important. Uh, and in all this, there's also that entire aspect of during elections, what is going to happen. BNP, when I was asking Fakhrul Islam, Mirza Fakhrul Islam Alamgir, uh, about BNP and uh, Jamaat coming to power together. He said, why are you always clubbing us together? Mm. BNP is its own party because Jamaat is extreme, extreme and they don't yeah. want to be seen as extreme. So they right. will fight their elections and then see if they have the numbers. If not, they will have to get yeah. the Jamaat in, yeah. in, a, in a coalition government, should that be the case. Okay. If they get the numbers, if okay. BNP gets the numbers, then they will not require the Jamaat. Hmm. Otherwise, they'll have to have, they'll have, to have the Jamaat. Okay. So, so right now, I think they're just like leveling the field. Right now, they're just, they, they're just trying to feel the, uh, the, the country's uh -huh. pulse yeah. ahead of elections and, and preparing this, themselves in hmm. every constituency for themselves. Yeah. With these statements also, they are like... Um, sort of giving a message that okay if we come to power these are the things that they'll be like we want to you know retract many of the bilateral treaties between India and Bangladesh so these are the things that they're just uh, going with right now so that they give a message but of course if they come in power I think it will be a different you know because you have to yes. let the diplomacy also work yes. it can't be like this or that right yes so okay yes. So I think uh, we'll put an end on that note, Geeta. Thank you so much as always. Thank you, Anna. Very, uh, very enriching. And I hope all the listeners and viewers also who keep commenting, by the way. Yes. And sending their messages. Thank uh, you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, as and when, find time, we'll respond to all your messages. But please keep writing in. Please keep suggesting. It's yeah. always a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And there's a number which is Eight five double eight nine double six double nine six, and you could also email us on ports at the rate india today dot com. Also, leave us a rating that I mean, those please do definitely matter. Spotify, Apple Podcast, Chartable, wherever you find your podcast on. Thank you. Thank you.